All right, welcome back, everyone. We're continuing on in the Narnia Over the Wire war game for binary exploitation. At the end of the last video, we got the password for Narnia Zero. We did a very basic buffer overflow. So I recommend watching that video before you watch this one. All right, let's get started. Let's log in as a Narnia One user. Enter in their password. And we're good to go. Let's cd into the Narnia directory, ls tech l for anything that has Narnia 1. All right, we see a set user ID binary, and then the C source code file. Let's run Narnia 1, see what happens. Give me something to execute at the environment variable egg. All right, that's interesting. So I can view the environment variables on the system by doing env. So I run that and there's nothing called egg here. We see the home directory of my user, home Narnia1. We see the shell that I'm using, bin bash. Their path environment variable, but nothing called egg. Let's open up that C source code file. All right, lots of comments and then the main function. All right, this line here declares a function pointer. The next few lines look for the environment variable A. And if it's not present, which in our case, it's not there, it'll print, give me something to execute, and then it exits. So that's what we saw. This is the condition that we met. But here's what we want. We want it to print trying to execute egg, and then it calls get environment variable an egg. It stores it in that function pointer, and then it executes it. So function pointers can be a little confusing, but essentially it just grabs the result of whatever is in egg, and then it executes it. So to get started, let's set the egg environment variable to just some junk data. I'll set it to just a bunch of A's. Enter. Now I can print it out. There's my eggs. I can do env. And we see it here. So that's good to go. Let's rerun it. Trying to execute egg. All right, that's good. And then we get a segmentation fold. Let's open this program in GDB. I'm going to hit Control L to clear the screen. This is symbol the main function. Okay. So this is the assembly instructions for that C source code that we just saw. This is AT&T syntax. You can tell because it has the percent symbols. I'm not a big fan of AT&T syntax. If you want to change it, you can do set this assembly flavor to Intel. Now read disassemble main. And the syntax, I believe, is a little bit easier to read. All x86 instructions typically begin with setting up the stack pointer. So we see the base pointer getting pushed, the values being saved on the stack, and then the base pointer is being set to the stack pointer. And then at the very end, we see that um, it's being undone with the leave command. So this, so the first three, four instructions, and then the last few can typically always be ignored. They're always going to be very similar. It's always going to be setting up the stack and then tearing it down, restoring it. What we care about, and this is a great thing about the GDB debugger, we like these labels. We see get n. We saw that function call earlier. It's testing to see if it's null. And if it is, go to line 43 that we see is right here. So push this value on the stack and then print it out. Let's see if we can see what this is. Examine string at this address. Trying to execute egg. Okay, so if it's not null, jump not equal. So if it's not null, so if, so if the egg environment variable is set, it goes to line 43, it prints trying to execute, it pushes this value on the stack. Can we print that out? Egg, all right. 
let's set a break point here at the call, the second call to the get environment variable right before it executes it. B for break, do star, and then that address, it creates the breakpoint. Oops, created too many. Run. All right, we hit breakpoint one, trying to execute egg. We examine the stack pointer. Okay, what about the base pointer? Let's go to the next instruction. I don't really see anything worth noting here. All right, I ran another disassemble. This arrow, this call EAX instruction. Let's hit an I. Okay, now we get question marks. Let's hit enter again. All right, what's going on? We're getting, this address is going up by one each time. Let's examine what's going on at the stack pointer and the base pointer. IR to look at the registers. Right, so this value, FFFDE31, 32, and 33 are stored in ECX. We see that here. And what's currently being executed by the instruction pointer is 414141. That should look familiar. These are our A's. So our A's are being executed. The instruction 41 is really increment ECX. So that's why the value in ECX is being updated by one each time. To show this another way, let me put out of here. Yes, instead of doing GDB, let me do GEF, the GDB enhanced framework for Narnia. Disassemble, disassemble main. All right, it prints it out in Intel syntax by default. Let's set our breakpoint here at the call to EAX. So EAX is gonna contain our A's and then this call is gonna to try to execute it. That's the function pointer being executed that we saw in the source code. So let me grab this, break here, and run. GEF is a plugin, it's like an enhanced version of GDB. So it prints out the the registers for us. We see EAX, it has all our A's. This is our A environment variable. It automatically prints out the flags, it prints out the stack. So this is next up to be executed. And then it disassembles some of the main function for us, right? We can see where we're at. It automates these things for us. It makes it a lot easier to read. I'm gonna do NI to step one instruction. And you see here, we're incrementing ECX. That's what each one of these A's is a different increment ECX instruction. All right, I think we proved that point well enough. Let's clear the screen. So what's going on? If I go A, it starts all A's and these are being executed. So that's good. But now we want it to execute something else. We want to get like a shell, like bin sh. It's not enough to say export A to bin sh because it's going to treat this as a string and it's going to try to execute the string. What we want is to set this to some shell code. I found this great repo online on GitHub. It's just called Shellcode. It's a collection of shellcode ripped straight from the Shellstorm database. We host this for easy access. The author is Seven Feely. I'm not sure how to pronounce that. We see John Hammond made a commit on this six years ago. If you're not familiar, John Hammond is another great YouTube content creator. So all the shellcode is organized nicely. We're on a Linux system, so we want Linux shellcode. We want 32-bit x86, and it has all these options for us. We just want a simple bin sh. Let's grab this. It tells you very nicely what instructions are being executed. The code is already compiled. You can verify it with strace, but we don't need to run any of this. It tells us to have a nice day. That's very nice. We just want to grab this. We just need the string. 
we just need the hex of these instructions. We see the first one is 99, which is that, CLD. 6AOB is this. So we just want these raw hex instructions. Let's paste it in here using echo attack E. You can echo egg again. Oops. So I made a mistake. I want a dollar sign. Good thing we verified it. Now when I do it, I get this junk. That's awesome. I love that junk. Now let's rerun Narnia 1. Hmm, it still sees it as null. That's interesting. EMV. Our egg environment variable is no longer there. That's weird. All right, I'm not sure why those issues were going on. The solution for me was to log out of this SSH session and then re-log in. So this is what we wanted, right? So this is the shell code we found for binSH. It's trying to execute it, but we get a seg fault. We could open this up in a debugger, step through it, or for the sake of time, we can just look for uh, some more shell code. All right, so it doesn't like us executing binSH directly. Since this is the C programming language, Let's look for the exec system call. See that here. Here we go, exec CVE. Execute this array of instructions. We see a few options for bin sh and bin bash. We want this one, the one that has the tac p. The tac p indicates keep the privileges. If we run this top one, we'll get a shell, but it'll be as the Narnia one user, it'll be as our current user. We want the set user ID bit enabled. So grab this. You see the shell code is a bit larger here. Thankfully it's on one line, one string. Let's grab that. Copy it. Slam that in there, our new shell code. And rerun this executable and we have a bash shell who am i i'm narnia2 id and then i can cat out this user's password so there you have it guys we looked at environment variables we looked at function pointers gdb and the gdb enhanced framework and then we looked at a great resource for finding shellcode online for different systems Remember to like, comment, and subscribe. Let me know below if you found a different way to solve this challenge. Take it easy and see you guys in the next video.